Welcome to Brian's Mobile One. Today we're going to be talking about oil cooler O-rings. So the next leak that I'd like to tackle is this one right here. I've got a leak and it's not from the oil filter O-ring but it's the O-ring between the cooler and the block. It's just like the one with the filter but higher up. I'm so sick of this thing making oil spots on my driveway. It makes me crazy. I have to let that splash and drip for a little bit. There's a tube that's screwed up through and it's got a nut that holds the cooler against the o-ring and the o-ring against the engine block. So what you got to do is drain your... So as you can see there's a nut that's up in here against the cooler. So you can leave your lines hooked up. It's a little hard because you got an exhaust shield on this one so it doesn't flex as much. Um, otherwise what you can do is pull the hoses off and it'll enable you to pull the whole thing down. Let me show you one that's already out. So what we're looking at here is you see the little cooler line? So you've got coolant that's going through and then oil that's going through. So the oil is going to go through the channels on this side. I'd have to have the other side to show you where it gets in here. But basically there's a little hole right here that oil passes through. And then another one on this side. Here's what it looks like all together, you know, with a filter on it. And then this one has an adapter plate. But where the O-ring is, is the O-ring's right in here. When you look at this one, you can see a little casting where the O-ring goes in here. And then your oil filter would seal on this surface, just like you have here. So this one's a 24 millimeter. What I'm going to do is uh, crack that loose. Just spin it out. So it's basically like a bolt that's hollowed out and then it's got extra threads on the end of it to screw your filter onto. So when you screw the filter on, this is what this is threaded, this is threaded, and then it's just got the little thing in the middle. So at this point, what we could do is wait till the oil quits dripping and then start a new drip of the antifreeze that's going around and through this. Or we could just pull it down just a little bit and then sneak the o-ring out with the dental pick and then get a matching o-ring. I don't have the patience for this leak anymore to allow it to abide. So I've got a little uh, 90 degree uh, shepherd's crook tool or I could work through a mirror or something. Yeah, I can feel the groove. It's kind of a fun statement. I can feel the groove. This is a Subaru XT 2005, I think. It's a little bit newer than the one that I just showed you on the WRX, but you have the same leak. That's the oil cooler right there. It's just so covered in oil that you can't... And the telltale thing is that you got a leak on the oil filter. It just keeps coming back, and then there'll be a trail of oil back. The problem is you leave this unattended, you don't fix it, and basically the oil uh, gets all over the rubber boot for your rack and pinion and makes the rack go bad. So they're kind of related. One causes the other to fail if you just ignore it. You can see the boot on the bellows on this side of the rack. It's totally fine. We'll get up underneath it here, turn around a little bit. That heat shield is actually one piece with the clamp that holds on to the... Uh, Hose there, coolant hose. So he needs an O-ring too. Probably just stock up on those and keep them on hand, huh? On the second Subaru that I showed, I was able to sneak in a little O-ring without undoing the coolant lines. There's a little cross pipe that goes across the front of the engine. And if you look on the, as you're facing the thing, you look on the right hand side, pull the bolt out of that, and it gave me enough slack to just rotate it. You just rotate it, uh, the driver's side down a little bit, and then you're able to get the O-ring in there pretty easy. So, but you just need to make sure that you visual check it and then make sure you put it together really carefully. So here's what we've got. You see that the O-ring's just really flat and if I push it with my fingernail, you feel it's really hard. And you see that there's dirt that's passed over it and around it and down the side. It needs an O-ring. It looks just like the Nissan one. It's even orange. This is the oil cooler. I've cleaned it up quite a bit as you can see. This is the o-ring that came with it that was leaking. You see how it's really flattened. 
So we'll pull that out and look at it this way. You can see that it's got a significant lip on the end of it. You can see that right there. Where it's just really flattened out. So the new O-ring, for Subarus anyway, here's the one I'm going to be using. And it is a $7 O-ring. It's really cheap. It's no big deal. Um, if you're working on a Toyota, like this is from a 4.7 liter, they're a little bit different. And they're black. So this little black O-ring. I'd never rarely have problems with these just on very older ones the, these orange o-rings however you find them a lot on a Nissan like this is from a Nissan Armada I believe this is from a Nissan Frontier and uh, you can see how it's square they're not also square when you get them they're a little bit rounded on the corners but I gotta wonder if the same vendor does the ones for Subaru and Nissan see here is uh, o-ring from the from an oil filter for a WRX. You see this is too thick and too hard. If you try using one from the, even though they're interchangeable to a degree, you could probably use the orange one on the oil filter and get away with it. It actually fits in there really good. The problem is if you try to use one of these on your oil cooler, it fits in there just perfect. I mean this one fits a little funny because it's been cut in half. But it'll fit in there, but the problem is it's going to leak because this is going to bend over or lay over. It sticks out too far and it's not as supple as the orange one. It's much, much more stiff. So why bother with even showing this? Well, for me, I'm curious about it. And a lot of that comes from when I was a little kid. I always used to watch shows like MacGyver or nowadays I really like watching Burn Notice. Uh, the, the spy Michael Weston, he always comes up with these amazing cool solutions and Fiona you know she does all these cool things and innovations to get them out of a pinch I really like uh, coming up with ideas and things that can get you out of a pinch you know say you don't have access to this well what can you do well we're going to talk about that a little bit um, I, I mentioned that the o-ring from an oil filter is the same diameter but chances are really good it's just going to squirt straight out sideways for whatever reason um, maybe one of the times that I've tried it I tighten it down too far uh, so a better idea is rather than using uh, oil filter o-ring because they're too stiff and they're too tall is to go ahead and reuse this o-ring and I'll show you what that'll look like but basically you just take this o-ring and you use some gasket maker underneath and you put this over it and then you use some more here and that way you're glued in on all sides so it's like uh, I don't know it's like a chain link fence with plastic applied to it or sealant applied to it becoming uh, more of a barrier so even though this is worn down even though there's a gap the gap can be filled etc so what we're doing here is I get everything really nice and clean. I clean the channel that the o-ring goes in. I clean the o-ring and make sure that there's no oil left on it. That sounds pretty easy, um, but it takes a little bit of chemicals sometimes. It takes some alcohol, glass cleaner, brake cleaner, something that's going to... I wouldn't use brake cleaner so much because it causes uh, o-ring expansion sometimes. But anyway, get it clean so that the gasket maker sticks to the o-ring. Get the surfaces clean so that the gasket maker can also stick to the ceiling surfaces. When you do this it feels kind of like you're a baker, like you're putting frosting on a cake. Because you're being careful you're making sure that you get it just right going around. If you put too much of it on you risk having it get into the oil filter or into the oil cooler. There's teeny tiny little ports and passages that you do not want to be blocked with gasket maker. So you want to make sure that you have a continuous ring and that your continuous ring isn't going to lose a piece here or there. Now what kind of gasket maker should you use? Don't use RTV blue or RTV black or anything that's not oil suitable. You want to make sure that you use something like Permatex Right Stuff or something that is uh, suitable. You know, uh, RTV or uh, Permatex Right Stuff black or gray works fine and also RTV orange, just something that's suitable for oil. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. If you found this one helpful, click thumbs up. I really forgot. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> camera, it doesn't really bother me. So. Make a bloopers reel or something. Yeah.
All right, three. Wait, oil or, cool oil or cooler O-rings? Oil cooler. I feel that's like a tongue twister today. Oil or cooler. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Is it filming? I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Brian's Mobile One. Today we're going to be talking about oil cooler O-rings. Oh. 